Well, hello, everybody. Uh, you're a badass. Chapter 8. It's going to be in two parts again. It's a little bit bigger. Okay? I'm going to get reading. What are we, what are you doing here? The big question is whether you are able, going to be able to say a hearty yes to your adventure. Getting clear about what your unique purpose is can be a difference between living a happy, fulfilled life of abundance, choice, and expensiveness, or living in a restrictive veal, veal pen of your own indecision and tired old excuses. The gift, of course, is meant to be given, which is why it's not why it's so brutal when we can't figure out what ours is, or when we know what it is, but we're too lame to act on it. Here we have the perfect gift to share with the world, just bursting to be opened, and we keep it we keep it sitting there, wrapped tightly in a box, growing old and gathering dust. Oh, the waste, the agony. Meanwhile, the joy of giving someone the perfect gift is un unpropelled. We all know how it feels, ho hopping back and forth from foot to foot, wringing our hands, practically peeing in our pants, begging them to open it. Open it already, Jesus H. Christ, let me freaking do it. The power of giving is so strong that the excitement and the good feelings are often greater for the giver than for the receiver. <clears throat> Which is why when you find your calling and you design your life in such a way that you can share your gifts with the world on a consistent basis, you feel like a rock star. When we share, we were brought here to, when we share what we were brought here to give, we are in alignment with our highest, most powerful selves. Most people, however, wander through their lives giving the tasteful candle version of their gifts. You know, they don't show up to the party empty-handed or anything. They present their somewhat flaccid gift to the world, receive a warm hug, and, oh, you shouldn't have, in return. But they don't knock it out of the park. For example, they're doing a great job. Or, for example, they're getting a, a job done. Wow. Sorry. For example, they get a job doing something that they either hate or that's a bit of a yawn, but is, you know, okay. It affords them a life that covers the basics as long as they don't go too crazy. They do fun stuff, but not as much as they'd like because they don't have the money or the time or the belief that they deserve to. They have little victories here and they're here and there. They meet their sales quota and win the 60-day cruise to the Bahamas or rack up enough miles to go stay with their aunt and see the Olympics, or finally sit down and write an entire song that they may or may not have recorded ever or performed, or performed, but they never truly go for it and create a life that really lights them up. They basically big snooze their lives away. Every single person is born with unique and valuable gifts to share with the world. Once we figure out ours, what ours are, and decide to live our lives putting them to use, that's when, and only when, the real party begins. Living a life on purpose is available to everyone. So if you're struggling or settling or completely confused about what you're supposed to do with your life, know the answer is already here. It exists, and so does the life you can't wait to create. You just need to get some clarity first. There are entire books written on finding your calling, some of the best of which I share in the resources section in the back of this book or on my website, but the following are a few of my favorite tips. Keep in mind that there's no right way to go about this. Everyone's journey is unique, but we're all trying to get to the same place, our place where we feel happiest, the most alive, and the most like ourselves. Even if you've nailed the perfect career for yourself, read on because these tips can help you in all areas of your life. How to be clear on who you are and what your calling is? One, be the alien. Imagine that you're an alien floating around in outer space and you suddenly swoop down to Earth and inhibit your body, your own body. As the alien, everything about this life is new to you. You look around. What do you see? <clears throat> what is this person who you inhabited so obviously awesome at? What do you have the most fun doing? What connections do they have? What resources and opportunities are available to them? As the alien, to whom everything is new and exciting and there's nothing to risk and no past to lug around, what are you going to do with this incredible new life you stepped into? 
How are you going to use this new body to the existence to create something fabulous and awesome starting right now? This exercise is hugely helpful for getting new perspective and stepping out of your boring ass rut of tired old excuses and lame habits. It can only be very useful. It can also be very useful in making you aware of all the staggering possibilities and resources that you have at your fingertips and take for granted or do not see. Sometimes it's as simple as looking at things with new eyes to see how astoundingly fortunate we are. See the alien for 24 hours and see what you come up with. Two, take the first step. Take the first right step. <clears throat> Instead of wasting hours and days and years trying to figure out what your perfect next move, just do something already. Oh, the time we waste rolling ideas around in our heads, imagining what ifs, coming up with perfect reasons why and then perfect reasons why not, tearing out our cuticles, making our friends and family carefully screen their calls in case it's us again, wanting to go over some ideas. Get out of your head and take action. You don't have to know exactly where it's going to take you. You just need to start with one thing that feels right and keep following the right feelings, feeling things and see where they lead. Most answers reveal themselves during doing, not thinking. When I discovered my calling as a coach, I was ironically in the midst of a lifelong obsession with figuring out how the hell to propose what my purpose was. While I was new, while I always knew writing was a part of it, I also knew I wasn't meant to spend my life locked away in a silent room alone and half crazed wrestling words into submission. I wanted something that A, involved interacting with other people, B, helped people in some sort of direct way, C, was really fun, and D, forced me to bathe, dress, and leave my house. That's about all I had to go on. That, and my intense desire to figure it out. So when a friend told me I should check out a woman's entrepreneurial think tank group, that had just started up, I figured I'd go. We were all supposed to bring a project to work on, but I had nothing, just the hope that I'd get some ideas from something someone else brought to the table. After sitting there for four weeks, watching this room full of women figure out what they'd love to do and turn their brilliant ideas into businesses or grow their businesses they already had, I still had no project of my own. But I did know what I wanted to do. I went up and asked the facilitator if she needed any help which she did. She hired me. I started leading these groups, which after a few years led me to starting my own coaching practice, which led me to working with clients all over the world, which led to me sitting at the kitchen counter writing this book. <coughs> no matter how clueless you feel right now, pay attention to the suggestions and opportunities that suddenly present themselves and notice how you feel. Is there something for you that for, for whatever reason feels like it might be a good checkout? Have you been saying forever that, that you'd love to do? Has somebody mentioned a course or a teacher or a book that keeps sticking in your mind? Take the first step in the direction towards something that feels right and see where it leads you and do it now. Three, do the best wherever you're at. Once you take this first step, it's possible that you won't land in your dream situation right away. You might land on a stepping stone. It could be an awesome stepping stone, or it could be a kind of unpleasant stepping stone. But no matter where your first step lands, you, if you want to keep moving forward, appreciate where you're, where you're at instead of feeling ashamed or grouchy or impatient about it. Everything you do along your journey contributes to where you're going. Let's say you've decided that you're just going to go after your fantasy of being a rock star and you take a job waiting table so you have the flexibility to travel and play gigs and go in the studio. Clearly your calling is playing music, not being concerned that some whiny customer's French onion soup is allegedly too cold. <laughs> but it's essential that you care anyway. Having a good attitude and being grateful for all the things that you're helping, that are helping your life, you live your life of your dreams, will not only make your life a more pleasant place to be and get a bigger, get you bigger tips, but it will also raise your frequency and attract the people and opportunities to you that will take you in the direction that you want to go. There, is, there were... <coughs> sorry, to pull in my throat. This is where really being present in the moment comes in handy. Granted, you may not be on stage in front of thousands doing a split 
in the air, but remember that you're going for it. You are barely motivating, moving towards your dream. Or sorry. You are bravely moving towards your dream. You are surrounded by unthinkable miracles and opportunities. Lean back, relax, and be grateful for that you're living on purpose, that you're hanging out in high frequency, and that everything you need is zooming towards you. And I'm going to cut that. We're going to make a second one here. Okay, so we'll see you on the part two.